When it comes to getting a good MIG weld, there are really three things that matter way more than everything else. And it's not what a lot of people are looking at. And I know that based on the questions that I get asked. It's not your settings, though settings are important. If you set it based on the chart and you have a good quality machine, usually that's gonna be close enough. It's pretty forgiving in most cases. It's not usually your movement pattern. There are TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts type videos that show every which way you could move your MIG gun. And that's not it either. What it comes down to are three things that in my online courses, I call the three elements of technique. Now in those courses, I break them down in a lot of detail. We get into hands-on exercises as well as all of the setups, settings, and welding common joints. So if you wanna learn a lot faster than you will learning uh, off YouTube videos, check those out in the description. They're all focused on hands-on action. But I'm gonna break down these three elements of technique here in this video, at least when it comes to MIG weldings. The first element of technique we're gonna look at is your stick out or contact tip to work distance. It's called stick out because that's how much wire is sticking out of your MIG gun. Now, typically with short circuit MIG like this, you'll want somewhere around a half inch of wire sticking out. And that's difficult because a lot of people will twist their wrist up like that and that'll extend the length of the wire. Now let's do some welding. I'm welding on some 1 8 inch material. So I'm gonna set my machine to 300 inches per minute, 18 and a half volts running 030 wire. Now watch as I run across here, as I run out of motion, if I don't slide my hand, this is what I've seen about half of beginners do when they first start out, is they'll rock their hand up. Notice how that stick out is getting really long at the end. And so we'll watch that end clip a couple more times. As it gets longer, this machine is a little more uh, forgiving to it, but most machines, it will really sputter out and you'll lose shielding gas on the end of your weld and you can get some porosity and oxidation. Let's try to do a better job of this here and just slide my hand along. And notice as I slide my hand, I'm able to maintain a consistent, steady stick out along the whole length of the joint that's gonna give me a much better result. Now the second element of technique we're gonna look at is our gun angle. Now when it comes to your angle, you have two different directions. One is called your work angle, and the other is your travel angle, and thinking about them separately can be really helpful. So let me show you right here. So this is a T-joint, and it has a fillet weld down in the T-joint. So those are some pretty important terms. And so what you have is you have your work angle. That's your angle relative to the actual pieces. So when I'm looking this direction right there, it's the work angle. In this case, it'd come in 45 degrees. If I was welding a butt joint, I'd be coming straight up and down. Now the necks on different MIG guns are bent differently. And so sometimes you have to stretch a little bit further than others for a particular uh, welding position to be able to maintain that work angle. And that's where it's worth taking a little time to actually line it up. Now the other is your travel angle and that's in the direction of travel right here. And usually you'll want this angled either forward or back about 10, 15 degrees. Something like that works out really well. That lets you uh, see the puddle. If you're coming straight in and out of it, that works too. But the main thing is to be consistent. Now, just a side note, if you are welding aluminum, if you're running spray transfer, if you're running flux core, those kind of processes, you do have to either push or uh, drag for the actual process. But for most of us, we're running short circuit MIG, and in that case, you can push or pull, and it works out just fine. Travel angles are pretty straightforward, but as we saw in the last clips, in the last section, you can end up rocking your wrist when you get into an uncomfortable position, and this is pretty easy to do without realizing it, especially in the beginning. And so if you can slide and just maintain that along with your stick out, I mean, the two are interrelated. Now let's look at work angles, and this is a proper work angle, 45 degrees in and out of the joint. And notice this is gonna give me an even leg length on both sides and I'll be able to get down into that corner where if I'm coming down or up, see this work angle is gonna give me a biased weld with a longer leg length on the bottom than the top. And I'm not going to penetrate down into the root of that joint nearly as well. It's gonna be focused on the bottom plate or in this case on the top plate. So it seems really obvious and it is, but you know that doesn't mean it's always easy to do, especially when you're starting out. And so this is just what to look for here in the finished result. You can see there at the end, even leg length, I can be a lot more confident that I penetrated down into the root of the joint because I was shooting right in there. 
where on this one, I was focused more on that bottom plate. And so I probably missed the root of the joint and I don't have a very long leg length on the top. So that's gonna be a weaker weld. Same thing on that third joint, except it's biased to the upper plate. Now let's take a look at our travel speed, which is the third element of technique. Travel speed is going to determine the size of your weld, right? Because if you slow down, you're depositing more material. If you speed up, you're depositing a little bit less. And there are limits to that, right? If you go too fast and don't let it fill in, you'll get some undercut or where it's recessed right next to the weld pool because you've melted material out and haven't filled it in. Um, and if you go too slowly, you'll either have something built up way too high, some weld that crowns up uh, right in the middle, or on thinner material, you'll actually burn a hole right through from traveling too slowly. So there's limits, but generally speaking, watch the size of that fillet weld and let that dictate your travel speed. Let me just show you here on an outside corner joint. Now this is a joint where you have to travel pretty quickly. So I'm gonna travel at an appropriate speed here at the beginning of the weld and then slow down at the end. And as I slowed down here, notice how huge that weld pool is getting. It's massive. And that's my hint that I'm going too slowly and it's building up a lot more than I'd like it to. And that's gonna leave me with a lot of grinding to do. Let's look at the final result. So here on the first half, it rounds over really nice. Probably don't even have to touch that with a grinder in a lot of situations. But over here, um, it's built up way too high. And so I'm gonna have to spend forever with a grinder on that, and that's all just a result of travel speed. So if you see that huge weld puddle as you're welding, you know your weld's gonna be large like that too, and you probably need to speed up a little bit. So here when you put all of these elements together, you're running with an appropriate stick out, you have a consistent angle, and a steady travel speed that's gonna give you the right size weld then you're gonna end up with something that's really nice and it really is as simple as that, though it's not always as easy to do, so it takes some intentional practice with each of these elements of technique to really get them down. All right, so get out there in the shop, try some of these things out, get your hands on the welding gun, that's where you're really gonna make the progress. And if you want me to walk you through step by step, every step of the way to uh, really get a handle on each of these elements of technique, as well as all the setup and welding common joints, check out those online courses linked in the description. If you don't like them, shoot me an email. I'll give you your money back, no problem. Thanks a ton for tuning in. We'll see you next time.